Okay, so today we're going to be going over how to do the install of the Fast Ace fork. Um, so this was the fork that was sent to me from Fast Ace. Uh, this is what it's called here. And uh, yeah, so super stoked to get this on. I can't wait. That thing is just feels way better. The DNM is what's on this bike now. Um, so I'm going to show you how to go through and take everything off. Um, you're going to want to take your bars off, uh, your headset. There's a screw on the top on both sides for the top uh, piece here. Which is basically this right here. But this is the one that came with that. Um, so there's going to be two bolts here. There's going to be a one on the back you're going to have to loosen. You're going to want to take your tire off and brake caliper. So yeah, let's go ahead and get that started. Pr pretty easy. I mean, there's a lot of videos on this already. Um, on the internet, but I figured I'd just do a quick install video um, with the Fast Ace forks. Okay, so if you have any spacers, make sure you take that off. And the fork's just going to pull right out now. There's going to be bearings on the bottom. These right here, there's this bottom bearing. And then this right here, um, we're gonna have to press out. Uh, I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver very carefully and pop this up. This is the only piece that's gonna need to go onto the other fork. There's the bearings here at the top with the race inside. This you're gonna leave, just leave it alone. That's gonna stay there. Uh, that's gonna go right onto the other fork. One thing I have realized, um, is the fork does not come with a pre-installed star nut so you're gonna have to buy one of these they're like five dollars they uh they're sold at any bike shop uh lightly tap it get it in to this second portion and then you're gonna get a flathead screwdriver and put it right on the top in the middle here and then just pound it in and you really you don't want it like too far in um you know basically you kind of just want to go like right here Okay, so you can see we're in. So again, um, what you're gonna need to do is pop this part off right here. Fortunately for me, it was, it was very simple. I just wiggled it and it came right out. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off. The fender that was on the DNM does bolt up. The DNM has three holes. Um, this one has two holes that it bolts up to. You can see right there. So yeah, so there's there's two holes that bolt up and it's I mean this thing ain't going nowhere. It's it's tight. It's very tight. So the stock fender will bolt up to this. And so uh, uh with this part facing up, we're gonna just slide this on. This is off the DNM and it fits perfectly over this and right onto the metal part of um, this. So what I ended up doing is just using a rubber mallet uh, here and I just hit the edge of uh, this part right here on here and then I'd turn it, rotate it, and then hit the other side and it, it flattened it out perfectly. You want to be light with it, you don't want to be hammering on it too hard, but if you don't have uh, the PVC pipe, uh, this piece right here sits flat on it and it worked perfectly. So this side has a flat edge, right there if you can see, and this side has a tapered edge, right there. So you're gonna wanna put the flat edge down and the tapered edge is gonna go up inside. All right, you want it to go as far up as it can. Okay, so once you got it up inside, it's kind of difficult. Don't get frustrated, it does come loose. Uh, you're gonna slide this on here. So th these channels right here are gonna be on the bottom. So it's gonna go like that. And this is this part right here is gonna face to the seat. And you're gonna slide this over. Uh, you're gonna wanna put your spacer that you had 
and then you're going to put on that piece. Okay. Um, it does look like I am going to have to either cut it or add a spacer. But see, it's it, there's no gap here and there's minimal gap right here under this. So you want to wiggle it back and forth, make sure it's tight, that you got it up all the way. Um, but my issue that I'm running into here is this right here. If you can see, it's, it's basically flat with it. You need this piece to be below this. So what I ended up doing is just putting a spacer. So I had the black one, I added this little orange one, and now you can see we have a gap. So that's what you're looking for. You want a gap that's below this. All right, so we got it all on now. To adjust the rebound and compression, uh, you are gonna need a flathead screwdriver. Um, you do have to use a tool in order to change it. So um, I have this tiny little one and it, it's more than enough. You know, you could put this in your backpack or whatnot. So it's 11 turns all the way out. And then it's gonna be 11 turns all the way in um, for this. On the bottom, it's gonna be the same. This one's gonna be here. You're also gonna need a screwdriver as well. And so yeah, you're gonna turn this. this. This one is also 11 turns as well. Out and 11 turns in. So this will control compression and rebound. It's actually very easy uh, to do. So uh, one thing you're gonna have to do if you want to is uh, these stanchions right here on both sides, there was, uh, they were about this much higher on here. So what you gotta do is uh, loosen these two bolts right here and then just twist it and slide it down. So that'll give you more height in the front. You're gonna have to zip tie this right here. That's the front brake line. I have a 220 Magura front rotor. So I have these spacers here. But other, other than that, it fits perfectly. If you don't have a 220 and just a 203, it bolts right up. Throw the axle through. There, both of those unscrew from the axle. And then underneath, there's these pinch bolts. You're gonna pinch bolt it, and then go to this side, and then tighten down here. And then tighten these two pinch bolts down here. Um, up top, what I ended up doing is, so we had to stack the spacer, and then you just tighten this. You make sure that, that it's all the way up by holding here, and you kind of wiggle it. And then you just tighten it down. You want to make sure that it, that it freely spins. And then you're just going to bounce it back and forth, and then tighten back this down, and then tighten these here. But yeah, pretty straightforward. Actually wasn't difficult at all. So uh, zip tie all your wires up to your bars. Make sure everything is ran properly. But yeah, super happy with the way it turned out. Uh, can't wait to actually hop on the bike tomorrow. I'm going to be changing out the motor. Uh, the motor on this one, actually the hull sensor went bad. So we're going to change the motor and then tune the brand new back 4000. So thanks for watching.